Hello again. We're going to be multiplying radical expressions. Uh, more specifically, we're going to be multiplying square roots. Not cube roots, not fourth roots, but we're going to start with square roots for right now because uh, that's what we were graphing and that's what we're going to continue with with expressions. Now when I start this lesson, it's a little confusing for students, especially when you start using addition and multiplication in the same type of expression or equation. So I can understand why students don't really like that too much. But you've got to keep a few things in mind when you're doing this to make your life a little bit simpler. And I usually start out with three example problems. I tell them, put in your notes, make sure you can't, I tell them to put everything in their notes that I tell them to write. But make sure you categorize this and put a big star around it so that you can at least be able to differentiate it later on. So I ask my students what 5 times 5, and they're like, it's 25, Mr. Shahadi. And I'm like, okay, very good. It's almost like I asked them a question that was terrible. And then I ask them, well, what's the square root of 5 times the square root of 5? And they say, uh, now they're a little bit more hesitant. They say, uh, is it the square root of 25? I'm like, it is the square root of 25. But the square root of 25 is just 5 when you simplify it. And that's actually when I stop the class and I say, when you multiply a square root times a square root, it's just whatever it is except it's under a square root now. You know, 5 times 5 is 25, square root 5 times square root 5 is square root 25. But if you're taking the same number twice when you're multiplying square roots, like square root 4 times square root 4 is square root 16, but it's also 4. Square root 3 times square root 3 is 3. All you're doing is skipping a step. Square root 10 times square root 10, instead of putting square root 100, you're saying, oh, it's 10. So if you got the same square root times the same square root, it's just whatever it is without a square root. And then I ask them this last question, 5 times square root 5, and say, uh, 25. No, actually they said square root 25. I'm like, nope, that's square root 5 times square root 5. They say, oh, 25. I'm like, nope, that's 5 times 5. Like, well, what is it? Like, I'll show you. And like, ah, that's cheating. You wrote the answer down already. I'm like, well, no. When you're taking a whole number times a square root, you can't combine them. When you're taking a square root times a square root, you can combine them. And when you're taking a whole number times a whole number, you combine them. Or integer, or whatever you want to say. So, I want to go ahead and do this problem first, and then do a series of examples afterwards to try to at least make it a little bit easier for you to multiply. And then we're going to work on division, then we're going to be adding and subtracting, which is actually the most difficult when it comes to square roots. So what I want to do with this one is, I can't subtract uh, square root 20 from 4. They're not like terms. So what I can do, and some people argue, well, can't you simplify the square root 20? And the answer is, yeah, I could. And it depends just on your preference. Uh, what would I do? I don't know. Probably just get the problem right. Poor math humor, but anyways. So I'm going to distribute the square root 5 into both terms. I have the square root of 5, five excuse me, square root of 5 times 4. That's 4 square root 5. It's not square root 5 times 4. It's more proper for you to put the uh, number, the whole number integer, or, uh, yeah, integer, let's just call it integer, in front of the square root. So 4 square root 5. And the square root 5 times, neg uh, times negative square root 20 is negative, and 5 times 20 is square root 100. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this problem. If you know that the square root of 100 is 10, perfect, then you're done. Then you can simplify that right away. Some of you need to split it up. And by split it up, I mean this. Again, you know, that's 10, that's 10, that's 5 and 2, 5 and 2. Circle the primes, and since it's a square root, you have to take out 2 at a time. So I have two 5s, which means it's actually a 5. And I have two twos, which means it's a two. Five times two is ten. You could also do it that way. And some people are say, well, I already know that the square root of 100 is 10. Yeah, but if I put in the square root of 32, maybe you would not have known that. So back to what I was going to say. So this is four square root five. I'm going to go ahead and erase my work here, just in case you try to do that instead. I have 4 root, 4 radical, or 4 square root 5, subtract 10, and you're done. But actually, it's more proper for you to put the uh, integer instead of uh, ahead of the uh, number that's being multiplied. So I would put negative 10 plus 4 root 5. Now the question is, would I really mark that wrong? No. I mean, I wouldn't mark it if you put it, it, it like this. It's not proper form, but I wouldn't mark it wrong, but depending if your teacher is very particular, and they very well could be, 
They didn't expect you to do that. That's it, let's move on. So I've got these examples here where I've got the square root of 8 times the square root of 8. Is the square root of 64. But if you take the same number twice and you multiply it together, it's just the number on the inside. It's just 8. Very good trick to know. It's not actually a trick. Very good idea to understand. Now I've got square root of 3 times x times 5 square root x. And students look at this and they want to give up. Don't give up. I've got a 3, that's a prime, I can't do anything with it. I have an x, it's a prime, can't do anything with it. I have an x, it's a prime, can't do anything with it. What I want to do is I want to try to simplify all my everything under a square root. 5's not under a square root, so I don't have to worry about that. So when I'm multiplying this together, the 5's not part of it, so it goes out in front. I've got two x's, uh, which actually make one x when I take it out of the square root because they were both out. And then I've got 3, there's no partner with it, so hey, you're staying inside by yourself. I don't want to stay, well, next time there better be another 3. So I got 5x times square root 3, or 5x root 3. Not too bad. Uh, rewind it back if you want to see that to make sure. Okay. Uh, when I'm multiplying, I take the numbers first that uh, are by themselves. Well, all of these are in the root, so they've got to all be handled together. Anything outside the root will be handled separately. So I've got a 5, bam, done. Uh, 7, I hope there's another 7 for this person, x, y squared is the same thing as y times y, and then x. Well, let's see if anybody has a partner. x has a partner, y has a partner, no partner for the square root of 7, you're inside. Different teachers teach it differently. Whatever you want to do is whatever you want to do. I say that yeah, these people go dancing and they do the square root shuffle. Which is a story I have done in class because I don't want to sing right now. This one, quantity square root 7 plus square root 2 times the quantity square root 7 subtract 3 square root 2. Um, okay, let's try it out. We are going to distribute, double distribute, or FOIL depending what you want to call it. And we're going to distribute the square root 7 times square root 7, square root 7 times negative square root 2. Now I'm going to write it out the long way. Uh, some of you might see it much faster, but I just want to write it out so you can see it. So square root 7 times square root 7 subtracted 3 square root 7 square root 2. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to have room. Let me erase it. Put it all the way down here. So I've got square root 7 times square root 7 subtracted by 3 square root 7 times square root 2. Now square root 2 times square root 7, that's going to be plus. Plus square root 2 square root 7 and square root 2 times negative 3 square root 2 is negative 3 square root 2 times square root 2. Let's Fix this monstrosity. Make it a little bit easier for everybody. Square root 7 times square root 7 is square root 49, but whenever you're taking the same square roots with each other, it's just 7. Uh, let me point something else out because this is actually going to be a lesson uh, uh, coming up. When I've got a subtraction or addition separating terms, see this is all one term right here. This is another term right here. Another term. Another term. I can't start saying, oh, this uh, 7 goes with this. No, it doesn't work like that. Now, only these 7, oh, I can only work with these. I can only work with these, these, and these. i got to treat them like four different problems. So square root 7 times square root 7 is square root 49, but it's also just 7. Subtracted, square root 7 times square root 2 is square root 14. So it's subtract 3, square root 14. Square root 2 times square root 7 is plus square root 14. But how many square root 14s it is, it's just 1. If there's no number in front of the root sign, it's just a 1. That will come back to help us. And this is subtracted by 3. Square root 2 times square root 2 is 2. So it's 3 times 2. Now that's a lot to absorb, so I'm going to go ahead and let you have a look at that. As I erase the problems overhead, because I'm going to need some room for this. Okay. 
I just rewrote that step, but I put it up here. So, 7, negative 3 square root 14 plus 1 square root 14. Now, they're like terms because they have both exactly the same root sign under, number under the root sign. If they didn't, then you couldn't add them. It is negative 2 root 14. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. 7 subtract 6 is 1. Subtract 2 root 14. Now, I can't actually, oh, gosh. I, I can't actually do anything with this root 14. Some people are going to say, well, can't you split it? Well, 7 and 2, nobody partners up with any other root. No, you can't. You've got a little bit more of a mammoth problem, but very good practice when it comes to multiplying radical expressions. We're going to work on dividing radical expressions and simplifying denominators. Uh, but till that time, that's what I've got. So have a good day for now.